Okay, hey, what's up everybody? Pastor Matt here. Thanks for checking in again to my YouTube channel. Hey, I'm thinking about global missions today, and the reason I'm thinking about global missions is because we are headed out as a church to Puerto Rico this Saturday. You probably recall that there was a huge storm that uh, crushed the island of Puerto Rico last year. And believe it or not, as Presbyterians, because we're in a connectional system, Puerto Rico is part of our presbytery here in Florida. We have the Caribbean area as well, so we have a few churches in the Bahamas and the island of Puerto Rico. There's a couple of churches that are in our fellowship. So we feel uh, some necessity and compunction to go and to help our brothers and sisters. Um, and they, they are in a world of hurt after the storm. And uh, we can't wait to go. We're going to do a mission of encouragement and fellowship and just remind them that we love them and care for them and help in any any material or physical ways that we can. And uh, for this reason, because I'm leaving this week, I thought a little bit about the theology of short-term missions. I wanted to talk about that. There is some debate, of course, in the Christian world whether or not short-term missions is a good thing or a bad thing. And I'd like to I'd like to discuss that. So let's take first of all kind of the devil's advocate position and, and suggest that maybe maybe short-term missions is bad. Uh, after all, some would argue that short-term missions takes away energy, uh, funding, support from the long-term missionaries. And if that's true, um, then I would I would agree. Short-term missions can actually be a detriment to a missions endeavors. Um, if I had to choose between supporting long-term missionaries who are on the field, who are entrenched, who are doing uh, the deep work, enculturated work in the neighborhoods, learning the language, uh, crossing those cultural boundaries, and committed to it for the long haul, then yes, absolutely, I would want to support that as over against our church going on some kind of short-term some ter short-term trips. Um, because the work of long-term missionaries is so kingdom important and relevant. I would never want to do anything to steal away that kind of energy. Um, moreover, I would also have some concern that short-term missions can actually be used by churches as, as kind of a way of, uh, of alleviating guilt because we all know we should be about the work of missions and the Great Commission. And so maybe, you know, if you do a short-term project, then you feel better about yourself and then, hey, you know, get back to uh, get back to the stuff of your own your own situation. And if that's the case, then then yes, I think there's a case that short-term missions could be bad. However, however, I think the either-or choice is actually a false dilemma, and it can be a both-and, short-term and, and long-term missions. And here's why: because if you talk to long-term missionaries and you actually ask these folks who have committed their lives, right? I mean, they're on the field; they're committed for the long haul. If you ask them how it is that the Lord called them into the mission field, very often what they'll tell you is that it was through a short-term missions experience uh, that they sensed the Lord's direction in their life. So whenever we go on short-term missions, uh, in the back of my heart as a pastor, I'm hoping and praying that God is actually going to use that to call people onto the long-term mission field rather than just quench or put off or snuff out their passion for missions I think there's a real sense in which God can use this for the good long haul. Not only that, but as a pastor, one of my goals as a preacher is to awaken my people to the global realities that are all around us. Uh, you know, we tend to think as Americans that uh, you know the whole world revolves around us. I say that to our shame. We're very egocentric. Uh, today is election day, and there's probably a lot of people who think that this is the most important thing on planet Earth today. All right? Uh, but I want my people to see the third world. I want my people to see Africa and South America and Asia. I want them to smell what poverty smells like. I want them to see what church growth looks like in the third world. I want them to hear with their own ears what it sounds like when tribal peoples uh, give praise to God. And so I've never, never wanted to hold back our church's short-term missions program because it's the short-term program that fuels the long-term program. Uh, we support about 10 missionaries or so full-time, on the field, hardcore, language trained, acclimatized to the situation, sometimes in dangerous places. We are 100% in favor of that, and I always will be. 
Uh, but our short-term missions program does help to awaken the body of Christ to those realities. And if anything, we've used our short-term program to push energy, finances, funding, support into the long-term programs. So it's a both and for us, and I think that's really important. All right, now, in every video I do, I like to make a couple of book reviews and suggestions. So let me go ahead and give four book suggestions about the cause of missions if you're interested in doing some reading. All right, uh, here's number one right here. This is John Piper's great book, Don't Waste Your Life. If you haven't read John Piper before, do yourself a great favor. That book is not about missions per se. It's about not wasting your life. But there is a really exceptional chapter about missions in that book, and I highly regard it. Also, Piper has a book called Let the Nations Be Glad, which is a theological and biblical work on missions. And so that would be make a great foundational work for your understanding of missions. Okay. Um, David Brainerd's biography, edited by Jonathan Edwards, is considered one of the classics of the field of missiology. In fact, it's said that uh, Brainerd's work has inspired more Christian global workers than any other book in history. Okay? It's the diary of a suffering 18th century a Puritan missionary out in the woods trying to reach Native Americans with the gospel through the arduous winters of the Northeast. You'll, you'll love it, okay? Uh, also, these two kind of as a pair, you remember the Jim Elliott story. Jim Elliott was speared um, by a South American tribe in Ecuador. Uh, here's his, here's his, uh, his journal if you'd like to read that. And also the story, the narrative told through the gates of splendor by his, his widow, Elizabeth Elliott, a great great read in terms of Christian missions, okay? So what I'm going to do as always is I will put a link to these books in the description of this video. Love for you to go online and grab some books and do some thinking, reading, praying about what your church can do for the sake of global missions. Uh, I'll end with a quote from John Piper. He said, uh, he said this many times in various places, that we really have three choices when it comes to missions. Either we are senders, we are goers, or we are disobedient. And the last thing we would ever want to do is be disobedient to the Lord's cause. Okay, love to hear some feedback from you. Feel free to comment in the uh, comment section below. Don't forget to check out the resources in the description of this video. Like and subscribe, all that stuff, or don't. There's plenty of good stuff on the internet. Uh, you can follow on Twitter at Matt underscore Everhard if you'd like. That's it for today. Love you lots, and we will check you later when I come back to the United States. Have a great week. Great week.